So you mask that image in Affinity Photo, but when you move your layer, the unmasked areas show up. Quite irritating. So let's take a look in this video how we can fix this. I'll share two methods on how to resolve this issue, but first let's kick off by making a mask using the selection brush. Once we have selected our subject, I will use the refine function to fine tune the selection for a mask. Usually I quickly put the preview to black and white to see if there are any areas I have missed. If so, we can set the brush to foreground and paint over the missed areas. The mask selection looks pretty good to me. I'll output it as a selection and press apply. Before making the mask, I like to save the selection. A quick way of saving a selection is using the channels panel. If the channels panel is not enabled in your setup, you can always enable it from the window menu. Right click on the pixel selection and choose create spare channel. In order to keep things a bit organized, let's name the created spare channel by right clicking and choosing rename. Excellent. Now we are ready to create the mask. While the selection is still enabled, let's press the mask icon in the layers panel. This will add a mask to the active layer using the selection. As you can see, we have masked out the background and the bottom red layer is now shown. All looks fine, but when I now move the layer with the mask, notice what happens. The mask we created is only applied to the canvas area. And as we move our image layer, the mask is also moved, revealing the parts that were initially outside of the document canvas, which is pretty frustrating. So here is the first method to fix this. I'll select the mask and from the channels panel, we can now right click on the mask alpha and choose create grayscale layer. This will create a grayscale pixel layer from the mask, which is added as a child of our image layer. I'll drag it on top of the layer mask so we can see it. I'll also remove the mask we currently have. Let's select the grayscale layer we just created and select the Rasterize to Mask option from the context menu. Beautiful, we got our mask back. As it is on top of the layer stack, it masks everything below, including our background. I'll drag and drop it on our image layer so that it gets clipped to the image layer only. Beautiful, we got our original situation back. But when I now move the image layer, it gets masked correctly. The initial areas outside the canvas are also being masked now. Pretty awesome. It does not really make sense, but I have a slight idea why this works. I think the rasterize mask option creates an empty mask first and then uses the white to paint the mask. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll make a selection of the current mask and this time I will add an empty mask by right clicking on the mask icon in the layers panel. By default, the empty mask will block everything. With the selection enabled, I can now paint the selection white. When I move the image, notice how everything works as expected. For comparison, let's create a regular mask. We need to paint away the areas we don't want with black. So I need to invert the pixel selection and paint the inverted selection area with black to block the background from the original image. When I now move the image, the image areas outside of the canvas will show up as there is no mask information there to block them. Hope this makes sense. So the long story short, if you are using images larger than the document canvas area, Use an empty mask or apply the hack with the grayscale rasterize to mask. So let's move to method 2. This is one of my favorite ways. Masking utilizing the erase blend mode. Let's revert back to the situation where we have the masked image. Just like in the first method, I'll use the channel mixer panel to create a grayscale pixel layer from the mask. I'll move this to the top of the layers tag. Next, I'll add a fill layer and move this below our grayscale image. Let's also make sure the fill layer is set to pure black. 
I'll select both of them and group them. Once we have our group, we move it as a child to the image layer. Notice how this group looks like a mask. Now, by changing the blend mode of the group to erase and modifying the blend range accordingly, we essentially make it function as a mask. This blend grain change in the erase blend mode preserves the white areas and removes the black, basically mirroring the behavior of a mask. We can now move the image around and all will work as expected. This is because we use the black fill layer in the group, covering the canvas all the time. The cool part of using the erase masking method is that you can easily combine masks. I can add a white rectangle to it and that area is also shown. I can also use different blend modes in the group to make interesting effects. For example, when I use the difference blend mode on the rectangle, it acts differently, blocking the overlapping areas and showing only the non-overlapping areas. Or I can add a white circle and set the blend mode to subtract to remove it from the existing mask area. You could also achieve similar effects with a compound mask which was introduced in version 2. However, compound masks do not work with vector objects and you need to rasterize them first in order to apply logical operations like subtract. Anyway, that is maybe for another video. Thanks again for tuning in and as always, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Until the next video.